Welcome to Alternative Soundcheck. My name is Casey McCabe, and today we are headed to New York City, catching up with the multi-talented, Grammy-winning, very super cool Jack Antonoff of Bleachers. How are you? Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's morning time. We're, we're all waking up. Yeah. Uh, how you doing? How, how's New York? New York's good. I don't really... Uh been working a lot so i um mostly in the studio uh, which is in the house so could be new york could be anywhere uh, i feel like the grind is always on for you do you ever take a break i mean i feel like it went from like tour putting out a live album snl tour again do you kind of ever reboot yeah i don't i don't work like um uh i don't work like in the middle of the night i don't wake up too early so i, I kind of do it like a pretty normal little schedule mm -hmm. so sometimes i imagine like and also like things are taking so long that sometimes i feel like the output of things creates a, a scenario that's like more wild than it actually is where is like home base for the creative process is it do you have a home studio or is yeah, it yeah the like that's where i kind of like bring everything back to eventually um mm -hmm. so if i you know i've been recording some stuff in the uk i record stuff in LA or wherever or even on the last bleachers tour we went to Paisley Park for a little bit and recorded stuff and then I always bring it back here because I just uh it's also like I have all my shit around which is like a nice emotional thing that you not be able to escape yourself you kind of it's good to hear things in your place it's like my mom has this thing called uh cowboy boot syndrome it's a very literal concept but one time she went to Texas she bought cowboy boots she came home and she felt like a fucking idiot so <laughs> There's, it's not very different with, with music. That's great. I mean, and not to get ahead of uh, anything, but are you already working on new music? Are you working with other people on new music? Yeah, I'm working on a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, I never like to talk about it, not because it's like secret, but I think it's kind of like robs the audience of the ability to, you know, if, if you say something, I, you want the music to be the first thing people hear. Right, right. right. So if I was like, I'm making an album with Elvis or something, it would be like, uh, oh, then your mind would wander about it. You'd have thoughts and feelings and it would be this whole journey where you just want to, you just want people to, to hear the music first and then think, oh, wow, look who, who made that. I even think that with Bleachers. Sometimes I uh, X amount of people don't even know it's me. They just uh, see the name Bleachers and then after that, they can put it all together. Well, I mean, I think that's uh, that's a great idea. And, you know, with the album that your third album that came out and you put on the massive tour last year, took the break, you kind of kick off 2022 being on SNL as the first uh, musical guest. Congratulations on that as well. And then uh, you, you decided to kick off another tour. Tell me about uh, how dare you want more and kicking off this tour and why you chose who you want to tour with and, and kind of how you're taking it up to the next level. Well, I'm, I'm over... Not that I ever did much of it, but the idea of, you know, like the people that come on tour, these are, these are the people I listen to. I listen to Claude, I listen to Wolf Alice. I'm going to play this almost every morning, you know. I think Biba Dewey is one of the most exciting new artists. Like, every, this is like straight off my personal playlist. And when you tour, there's this thing where it's like, you know, everyone's trying to make like a one plus one equals two. Like, this band is just going on, this artist is going on. And, it's, and there's a lot of cool people out there, but it should everything should be an extension of what's going on with us. And so that, that's what the support reflects. And I mean, we're just, a, we just feel this energy to go out and play right now, it's partially because of the pandemic, it's partially because of the new record. It's also because there's this like feeling in the air of like all of a sudden, probably because the world's ending, but everyone's like electronics, not interesting anymore. Like, we want instruments, we want bands, we want all these things. And so it's kind of exciting to be like, Oh, the shit that you guys are into, that's what we've always done. Mm -hmm. And it puts it, like lights this fire in the man to just want to go out not in a competitive or arrogant way but in the kind of just do it how it's meant to be done <laughs> right right i mean your shows are so full of uh i mean just that live energy i mean you, the crowd you know feeds off of you guys and it just looks like a good time you know what are you looking forward to getting back on the road and in some of these venues that you performed at some of these uh places or some of them new the tour is a pretty big deal for us it's i always hesitate to like talk about the size of the shows because you know when i think about going to shows it's like you know sometimes you want to see big shows sometimes you want to see small shows but it's not always a good thing if a show is bigger right some some people are like ah, i wish it was at the smaller venue um but it's a pretty big deal for us it works for bleachers because it is a it's it's kind of a big experience to begin with 
Mm-hmm. You know, I always think it's awkward if you're like kind of on some letter code and shit, and then you go into like an arena. It's like, does this make <laughs> sense? I'm talking to a comedian friend of mine the other day about how it gets a little awkward when comedians go into venues too big. Um, but what we do is, you know, pretty big sounding. I always used to say we kind of bring the arena to the club. Um, and so on this tour, yes, I don't think it's pretty emotional to some of the rooms and just, it just serves as a point of uh, our community, how far it's come and, and where we want to go with it. I mean, you're already selling out a uh, huge, massive venues. I mean, congratulations, even like Red Rock. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. I've always wanted to play Red Rocks and, and to, yeah. Is there's this the first time as bleachers or just in general? I, I did it with fun years ago. Um, but like everyone has their own definition of success. And so you get these ideas in your head. And, you know, like for me, I mean, Red Rocks is just this really important moment. No mm-hmm. different than when I was a kid. It was Barry Ballroom. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when the band started to get a little bigger, it was the Will Turn in LA. Oh my God, if you play the Will Turn. Um, yeah. And then it's sort of the same feeling. It just, the number just sort of changes of the actual amount of people that are going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a couple, there's Red Rocks. We're doing Radio City on this tour, which is, there's just these these big moments. And then even like, I think we're going to do a few nights at Stubbs um, in Austin. And so it's like all these different places. Like I remember being young and going to South by Southwest, like the biggest bands that play at Stubbs. Mm-hmm. and like obviously like maybe not everyone thinks Stubbs is the biggest venue but you just kind of like I mean it's like a legendary venue yeah there. you just it, your own personal experience about what you thought of it and then you ending up there is uh every, I mean it's every there's I would never I would never play a venue that I didn't choose you know it's it, when you book a tour like there's two ways to do a tour you can there's three ways you could just sort of like have your agent book it right or you could sell the tour to Live Nation or AG which is big promotion companies and they put it all in all their venues the third way, which is how probably most artists that people like do it, is they think every city, what's the statement? Why are we playing in this room? How's the sound? What's it like to go to shows in this room? Like very specific. And uh, and that can happen if you're playing small clubs or, or massive shows. And it's just always, because there's nothing worse than showing up somewhere. And I've played enough shows that I've had this and you're like, this venue sucks. And we're going <laughs> to we're gonna make the most <laughs> of it, but I'm fucking bummed that I'm inviting. Because you're basically throwing a big party, right? Right, right. Um, and so it's like things like Red Rocks and stuff. It's like, oh, I'm pretty excited to throw that party. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you on tour uh, at, at all the venues that you sort of pretty much handpicked. And uh, let's talk about how dare you want more. And, you know, you performed on last tour. You guys made the new video uh, comprised, compromised of uh, 15 cities. Um, yeah. And now it's out. Tell us about just going back to this song, the story behind it and uh, the life that it now has. You never know which songs are going to like kind of have their own moments. It's always funny because like you, you put out an album, you pick a single to go first, but then everything after that sort of the, the audience picks it. I just thought it was a weird song because it was like a weird sarcastic song. I'm talking about myself, I'm talking about my dad, I'm talking about my mom, you know, seeing people around me wanting to have a uh, more better experience in their, in their self. And uh, so I wrote this like kind of petulant song about it. And then something just kind of clicked and we started playing it live. And so there's a huge, you know, the audience has a huge power in these things. It's like, you know, everyone just all of a sudden at the shows, like that one just kind of went off. Mm-hmm. And, and we were like, well, there's this whole culture to it. We could go think of some video to make or we could just make the video right. of what's actually happening. And then it, it, and it's really cool like that. It, but that's also the journey of like putting on album. It's like you think it's a thing and you put it out and then you get to understand what people think it is and then somewhere you kind of meet in the middle Mm -hmm. especially if you're like a real touring man and how does uh mom and dad when they first heard the song what do they think about it i don't know we don't talk about it i just sort of (laughs) my whole life we've been talking shit about them and my music and then i guess they just they just kind of worry about it it. yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's smart play it smart that way um well congratulations on everything and also i mean grammy nominated this year yeah Uh, is, uh, another just thing i feel like adding to the list going to vegas man <laughs> um and you're vegas i mean what do you think of uh it being in vegas this year i'm not like a huge vegas person because i find it um i always feel very uh unwell when i leave mm-hmm. um just from everything it's like and honestly mostly the buffet is like that's what where i get really brought down you know really i mean they take yeah. you down 
you got it. It's like it's very exciting to me, but I don't. It's also the desert. If Vegas existed in like um, a coastal city, I think I'd right. have a different experience. So you're not. We're not going to see you at like the blackjack table with your Grammy award. Yeah, you see me at Hakkasan oh. vomiting on the fucking <laughs> table. I don't know. Maybe. Actually, who knows? I mean, I also, you know, went in. Uh, it was the uh, Romans would have. Uh, I don't know. What, I, I, yeah, like I, we're going for two or three days. Everyone I love is coming, so we'll probably do something. Gotta be something. I mean, yeah, there's another probably. side of Vegas. You could, you know, there is. There's oh. also a Red Rock out in Vegas. You could That's go true. to. That's Sorry to cut you off. My favorite Thai restaurant in the world, which the name escapes me right now, but. Brandon with the killers who's from Vegas um, showed me kind of this other side of Vegas where like people actually live and do things. So there's a whole world of Vegas and there's obviously this like booming real estate city, whatnot, but there's a Thai restaurant. that's the best place I've ever been to in the world. And it's not my opinion. It's like, you could, you could Google it. It's like, it's actually. Was so it in like, a casino or cause I lived in Vegas. No, no, no. Five years. Way out. It was like on like S- Summerlin area. Henderson. They opened one. They opened one in a casino later cause it was so popular. Um, um, Sorry. trying to think of what it would be. I'll, I'll remember the name if I see it. We go every time. Uh, Lotus of Siam. What is it? Lotus of Siam. Lotus of Siam. So it's a regular out, restaurant out in Vegas. Vegas. They opened one in a casino, but I think the original one is just like in a strip mall. Okay. And that so that that maybe we'll do some stuff like that with the family. I think that's a good idea. And yeah, you know, or maybe we'll do something really fucked up. <laughs> even a better idea um i mean okay so we have the tour um we have obviously grammys anything else you are looking forward to in 2022 that's on your list right now it's just the tour when you put up a tour it's like um it's you just it's like you just look forward to it like crazy like it's it's like there's nothing else to think about because you're thinking about the show you're planning it you're especially like this tour where like we were talking about kind of moving into some of these great venues like you just want to figure it out and get it perfect so i'm pretty obsessively thinking about the set list and things i want to do and guests and all that stuff we we, can we expect any special guests possibly yeah Yeah. Yeah. at each venue or at each uh i told you i made that record with dead elvis he's gonna show up (laughs) that's right all right well jack man we appreciate the time we look forward to the tour um the album everything you have going on congratulations thanks for having me i'll see you out there yeah thank you so much for talking with alternative soundcheck